church good Sunday morning to you. Come on, let's get up on our feet. Get out of the kitchen and shake those pots and pans. Make some noise for the Lord. Be glad for today. I'm trading my sorrow. I'm trading my shame. I'm laying them down for joy of the Lord. Say yes, Lord, yes, Lord. 
than ever, we say Hosanna. Do you know what Hosanna means? It means save us. It is a praise, a praise, rejoice word that says save us. So Jesus, save us. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Oh, we need him. We need him. Welcome. So good to be here with you in your living room or your kitchen or your family room or your car or wherever. In your yard, maybe? Where are you worshiping today? It's good to be there. We're all right there with you. We love you. We miss you so much. Amen. We can't wait till we can fill this place again Amen. with all of you and, and then some. God's got great big plans and we're, we're, on, we're with him on it. Um, we have a couple of quick announcements this morning. Don't forget, if you have kids at home or you're a kid at heart, go on in a little while on Facebook and catch the children's church message. We've got some songs and crafts, and it's just lots of fun. Also, this week is Holy Week. This is a week to remember and get ready for Easter, for Resurrection Sunday. So dig into God's Word this week and, and just make sure that, that as you move through this week, whatever you're doing, that you spend some time with Him and you prepare your heart and your life to celebrate Him in a great big way next week with us here at Cross Hill Church online and in your house. Um, this Friday is Good Friday. What's good about Good Friday? It's good because God is good, and He did it all for you and for me. Amen. We have, we're preparing a PowerPoint presentation that we can email to you. You know what? Good Friday has been such a wonderful time together as a family here in this place. And this year it's going to look a little different. But that's okay. God is still good, right? God is still good. Amen. And Good Friday is still good. And what he did for us is beyond good. So if you would like that email to you, make sure you reach out to us online on our on our um, on our website or on Facebook. Just let us know that you want that. Some of you have already given us your email addresses. We'll make sure that you get that. And then if you want to have communion together, gather some grape juice and some bread of your choice. And have that ready. If you would like to light the candles and blow out the candles, you'll need seven of them if you would like to do that as well. So, um, Good Friday this week. Also, next Sunday, Easter Sunday, Resurrection Sunday, we will be online at 10.30 a.m. with our Easter service, with our Resurrection Celebration. Yeah. But at 10 o'clock, we're going to do a meet and greet in a Zoom room. So, you know, we're going to see each other's faces. We miss you too much. We miss your faces. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, we can email that link out. Will that link also be available on, on the website? Okay, so you'll just click on that. If you have um, a smartphone, a computer, another device, you're going to want to download the Zoom app, and then you'll just click on that link, and that'll take you right to us at 10 o'clock, and we can we can greet each other in the name of the Lord. Okay? Yeah. That's, so that's the plan. I'll see you at 10 o'clock in the Zoom room. All right. Um, it is time to take our tithes, to pray over our tithes and our offerings. And this has been different, right? Everything is different right now. Everything is is um, huh, different. <laughs> What's the word? <laughs> different. Um, you can give several different ways. It's up there on the screen. You can go to chnorco.com and click on the giving link. You can text to give at 909. 325-3114 or if you would like to mail in your offerings and tithes, you can do that as well to P.O. Box 11448 San Bernardino, California 92423 Okay? So those are all the ways and, and you know what, if, you, if one of those doesn't work for you, reach out to one of us and we'll pick it up from you. Okay? You can slip it under your doormat or something. Um, we're, we're, we're taking care of God's business, right? Yeah. All right. Yeah. So let's let's just pray. And you know what? We give not because we have to give. We, we love because he first loved us. Yeah. Yeah. And he gave his all for us. And so we give because he gave first. And he gave best. And so would you offer yourselves to him this morning? Your hearts, your minds, your tithes, your offerings, your lives. As we, as we pray over our offering this morning. Oh, gracious Lord, you gave us everything. You gave everything for us. You loved us so much. And Lord, we are blessed to be able to show our love to you as we give to you. So Father, we, we ask you to bless the gift, bless the giver this morning. Lord, take care of them. 
bless them beyond measure. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. I do miss all of you. When I pray for you, I see you in my, in my mind's eye. But it was sure fun the other night when we were on Zoom and I saw some faces I hadn't seen in a while in the, in the real and they were talking. I love that. You know who you are. We're getting ready to, to pray. In Matthew 16, Jesus was talking to the disciples and he said, who do men say I am? They said, some say Elijah, some say John the Baptist, Jeremiah, one of the other prophets. And then Jesus said, and who do you say I am? And Peter said, you are the Christ, Amen. the living God. And Jesus said at that, on that premise, on that premise, I will build my church. And the gates of hell will not prevail against it. That's good news, amen? amen. I mean, yes. we're in a church building and it's empty. I want to let you know that we are not out of business. Come on. Come on. It's just a building. Right. We are the church. I'm looking at you. We're the church. We're a big church. And we may not be here, present, some of us, but you're just placed in a different area. You're, you're, you're on deployments, I read on Facebook somewhere. You're on the front lines. You're on the front lines in your house. You've got, honey, you've got more time now to pray and to cover your land, your country, your your nation, you've got more time to cover your church family than ever before. What a great opportunity, amen? amen. He continued on and he says, This is what this is what your authority gets you, honey. This is what your authority gets you. He says in verse 19, and I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And whatsoever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And whatsoever you shall loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. We have authority over that enemy, COVID-19. Yes. Let's stand together. You know I'm going to make you stand. <laughs> Let's pray. Father God, I come to you in the glorious name of Jesus. What a beautiful name it is. Yes, Lord. Thank you, sir, that we can come and take our stand as children of the Most High God. Nothing the enemy will try to do to us has power to succeed. I bless you for that, Father. I honor you. I thank you, Lord God, that you have called us for such a time as this, and we're going to lift our nation, we're going to lift our, our land, we're going to lift our, our, our church family, our, our, our brothers and our sisters, our, our families in general before you, sir, and we say, take authority over anything that you would try to do to us, sir. We give it to you. We bind it here on earth. We bind it in the name of Jesus. No weapon for against us will prosper. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. God bless you. Thank you, Father, that no weapon formed against me will ever, ever prosper. No weapon formed against you will ever, ever prosper. That's God's promise. We take our authority in the name of Jesus. We bless you, Lord. I thank you, Father God, for wisdom for those working for a cure. But, Lord God, you are the cure. We know you are. We know you are. I pray, sir, that we are bright lights in the dark place, and we minister your word to your people. We focus on your goodness. Bless you. We bless you. And all God's people say, Amen. Amen. I love you. I love you so much. It's easy to focus on fear, but it's much easier to focus on His goodness. Let's do that. Sing with us, Bill. I've been held in your hands. 
of God's goodness. Amen. And the church is the platform that's going to reveal it to them. But we have to be united and accept that challenge. Amen. That we are going to be light in a dark place. And we're not going to succumb to all the trash talk and everything else that's going on around us, but the church is going to rise up Amen. and be the church and declare that His goodness is not out of balance. It's not infected by a virus. It's, 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 God's immune system is not weakened down. He is still on His throne. He still holds, holds the world in the palm of His hands. He still throws out the stars every night. I'm telling you, He's, he's under control. And He's calling on us to reveal His goodness. 
thank you, Father. So right now, right now in your in your in your homes, um, you say, well, "This is awkward, Pastor. I'm in my home, um, having church on Sunday in my house is weird. What do you think it feels like preaching to an empty auditorium?" <laughs> It's, it's strange, but, but we're the church. We rise up. We do what we do. And so right now, just lift up your hands. Come on, just come on, get your family together. Just lift up your hands right now. And just thank Him for His goodness. Thank you, Father. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you for, thank you for your light shining so bright in this dark place. We honor you, sir. We thank you, Father, that you are making a way where there seems to be no way, where, where people are scratching their heads. The solution is already there. It's already it's already in, in, in your grasp. You are the answer. Jesus is the answer to what we're needing and looking for in the earth. We thank you, Father, for it. We honor you. We praise you in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. God bless you guys. Hey, did you guys know that this Sunday, this weekend, this guy right back here on the sticks has been with us for two years. Right here. Well, can you zoom in on him a little bit? Just catch his nose hairs or something. Get in on there and just zoom in on that. Look at that pretty face right there. Two years. Anyway, just God bless you. Mr. Tim O'Neill for being with us. And, uh, we, we're better because of him. Amen. So thankful to this team. Aren't you grateful for this team we have behind you? Thank you, guys. Uh, are you guys ready for, for some preaching? Hey, stay close. I may need you to come up and help me preach. Okay? God bless you. Okay, you guys got your Bibles? Get a hold of your Bibles. Um, turn your Bible on, whatever. Swipe it on. Turn it on. Hold it. And stand up right there in your living rooms, right where you're at. And uh, I'll let you guys get a hold of that. While you're, while you're looking for your Bibles, um, just be thinking about some of the things that Pastor Michelle was talking about. Let's just stay connected, guys, and really challenge you. I'm going to be on that 10, 10 a.m. Uh, Zoom link conference. I'm going to see some of your faces on there. So, so miss you guys. I mean, I was having withdrawals this week, and it wasn't just Reese's Peanut Butter Cups. It was seeing your guys' faces, and I just, uh, I, need, I need my fix. I need my Cross Hill church fix and so we're, we're so looking forward to the sunday when we come back together uh and we be together again amen but until then uh just continue to stay connected send each other encouraging words uh give someone a phone call text them let them know you're thinking about them just randomly do some random acts of encouragement let's just 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 beef up our connectivity in cross hill church amen so okay you guys got your bibles Come on, tell the kids to get around, get your get your Bibles, and uh, just say it like this. Say, every promise in this book is mine. Every promise in this book is mine. Every chapter, every verse, every line. Every chapter, every verse, every line. This word is in me. This word works in me. I am what this word says I am. I can do what this word says I can do. The favor of God goes before me. Preparing my way for good things. And from this moment forward, my life, my home, and my church will never be the same. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. Uh, I'm in uh, Matthew chapter 6 uh, this morning. Matthew's gospel chapter 6. We're going to hit a very familiar passage of scripture. We're going to start in verse uh, number verse number 25 notice this is the red letters of your bible that means jesus is talking the main man himself and he says to us therefore i tell you do not worry about your life what you will eat or drink or about your body what you will wear is not life more than food and the body more than clothes? Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or store away in barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they? Can any one of you, by worrying, add a single hour to your life? Well, you can flip that around and say, 
you can sure take off some hours to your life if you do. Mm -hmm. yeah. Verse 28, and why do you worry about clothes? See how the flowers of the field grow. They do not labor or spin. Yet I tell you that not even Solomon and all of his splendor, Nordstrom Rack, Gucci, all that, was dressed like one of these. If that is how God clothes the, clothes the grass of the field, which is here today and tomorrow is thrown into the fire, will he not much more clothe you of little faith? So do not worry. Come on. <laughs> so have you noticed that Jesus asks a couple questions? Well, first he asks a question, and then he gives the answer. And it's not even so much of an answer as it is a command. The question is in verse number 28. Why do you worry? The answer is in verse 31. Do not worry. There you go. Why do you worry? <laughs> do not worry. Um, I almost get the sense that some of you are listening to me right now and you're a little bit irritated from all the preachers who've been coming on the television or talking to you over the last several weeks telling you not to worry. Hmm. And, and I get the sense that some of you are almost at the point where you're saying, stop telling me not to worry. <laughs> like, haven't you been looking at what's going on around the world? Preacher, pastor. And so here I am adding to it, giving my two cents, telling you, not to worry. Um, but we almost get the feel that it's, it's if, if you just looked at this passage on the surface level, like right up there at surface level territory, it's almost like he's telling you, don't worry about those bills in the corner. <laughs> I know that the money has stopped coming in, but the bills continue to come in. So don't even worry about those bills. Just spend your day watching the birds. <laughs> Just go out and watch the flowers. It's okay. Don't worry. And, and you're like, well, would you please stop telling me not to worry? Because those bills are still in the corner. And something's got to be done about them. I'm not so sure that it's that he's telling you to watch the birds as much as he's telling you to observe the birds. Oh, there you go. And observe uh, the flowers. Mm, come on. So do not worry saying, what shall we eat, verse 31, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear, or how are we going to get toilet paper? <laughs> or, 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 I actually, I actually heard that uh, uh, some people were actually running out of toilet paper and they were resorting to using uh, lettuce. Oh, no. <laughs> uh, no. it's, it's just the tip of the iceberg. No. What they do next remains to be seen. <laughs> Let us all hope that that doesn't come to that in our own homes, because that might seriously drive a wedge between you and your other family members. The president is addressing the situation, and he's giving his crew tons of uh, data to look at. I know, leave, leave it alone. Okay, here we go. Ready? Uh, so in other words, for the pagans, verse 32, run after all these things. And your heavenly Father knows that you need them. But seek first His kingdom and His righteousness. Or let's just say, God's way of doing things and being right. Mm -hmm. 
And all these things will be given to you as well. Amen. Therefore, do not worry. There he is again. About tomorrow. For tomorrow will worry about itself. Yeah. Each day has enough trouble on its own. Let's spend a little bit of time today talking about the question that Jesus asks. Why do you worry? And I know some of you are sitting there looking at me like, where do you want me to start? How much time do you have, Pastor? Uh, but, but some of us who've been around in the faith for a little while, we've been serving God long enough, we've been, we've been, we've been walking this walk of faith, We've been doing this, this faith stuff for, for a while now. I think for, for us at least, the question gets converted on the inside to not so much, why do I worry? But rather, is what I have on the inside prepared to handle what's taking place on the outside? In other words, I've been at this faith stuff long enough. I, I've been walking by faith and loving the Lord and, and, and following his, his ways enough to know that by now I ought to be able to, to stay treading on top, keeping my focus on Jesus without being distracted by the wind and the waves. So then, Pastor, why am I still getting bumped in this season? Well, why am I still getting, getting, getting bumped in this, in this season? I, and I think it's because there is this relentless barrage of bad news touching our doorstep. Like every day we're waking up to new statistics of, of, of different numbers of people being infected. Yeah, this county doubled overnight. We're waking up every day to the to the stats of those who have died of COVID-19. And every day it's about how are we going to flatten the curve? Come on, somebody talk to me this morning. Yes, sir. And, 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 and even though those of us who know and stand on verses like Matthew chapter 6, 25 through 34... If we're not careful, some of that other stuff can get past our filter. Right. And before we know it, we're laying awake at night and we're just spinning. Come on. Mm. Come on. We're spinning. We're spinning. Have you ever been in a spin cycle? You, you, ever, you ever just like have one negative fear-filled thought spawn a whole bunch of other fear-filled thoughts? Mm -hmm. yeah. And you start spinning. Yeah. Like, here we are, this is, this is another week of COVID-19. And we're spinning. And now I'm at home and I'm not able to go to work. I'm a, I have a stay-at-home order I'm not essential. And, and what if the boss decides that they no longer need me down there? And they figure out they can do my job with, without me. And, and what if they, they lay me off permanently? And, and what if uh, I have to touch my retirement too early? And, and what if I've got to sell my house? And what, what if uh, I spend all my money too soon and I got to move in with my kids? And what if I got to get rid of my dog because my son in law is allergic to dogs? And, and what if after a while my kids get tired of me and they want to put me in a home? And, and, and what if, I mean, it's a good home. I mean, that's what the brochure says. But, 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 but. But there, when no one's looking, uh, they make me spend all day long playing Parcheesi, checkers, putting puzzles together for eight hours. And if I complain, they're going to make me eat peas for every meal. Oh, dear yeah. Lord. Yeah. Hey, did you guys hear about how COVID-19 will make you eat peas for every meal? 
my mind. You hear about that one? Joe. Spinning. Spinning. And spinning. I noticed something about worry. Worry seldom travels in a straight line. That's right. It's circular. It, it, it's, it spins you around. So, so he says, check out the birds. Can consider what they know that you don't know because maybe what they know that you don't know is because they are living at a higher altitude. Look at someone in your living room and say, start looking up. Start looking it's up. time to start looking up. It's time to start looking up because in order to observe the birds, what happens, you have to stop spinning and looking around at everything that's going on around you and you got to get your attention going in a different direction. Yes, sir. One, one, day, one day Moses looked out and he saw an Egyptian beaten up on a, on a Hebrew and he, and he killed the Egyptian and he buried him in the sand and, 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 and he thought he was covered and your Bible says, and he looked this way, and he looked this way, but he forgot to look this way. In his spin cycle, Moses thought that the only solution to get rid of this Egyptian problem was one person at a time. Yeah. But God was like, God was like, Moses, look up. You're looking in the wrong direction. It's time to look up because I have a wholesale plan to get rid of this problem. Mm. It's, time, it's time. Are you spinning? Are you spinning? Fear, fear, fear and worry. This is how they operate. They're like this. Around and around and around yes, sir. and around it goes. And if you notice something about my spinning, that, that there's a lot of movement going on. And, and, and I'm, I'm, I'm busy right now. But no matter how busy I am and how much movement I, I participate in, and it always brings me back to where I started. That is what it's like to toss and turn over stuff you cannot control. Amen. Come on. I, uh, those, you know about me that uh, I'm not just a pastor. Uh, I, I work in the I work in the dairy industry, and uh, when COVID nineteen coronavirus hit, uh, all the restaurants shut down, food service shut down, and uh, because food service and restaurants shut down, uh, our, our our cream sales plummeted. And I, I don't want to I don't want to give you all the technical. Uh, Details of milk making. Tim, our drummer, could, could talk to it better than I could. Uh, he, he actually has a license to make milk and, and pasteurize. But I can, I can tell you this, that uh, he, he, while everyone is panic buying milk, and so milk consumption is going up, food service and restaurants, cream sales are going down. So you still need to make milk, and part of the process of making milk is if you guys want milk and you want your 1% and your 2% and you want your skim. You got to separate the raw milk. And when you separate it, your skim goes one way, your, your cream goes another way. But we don't want to make cream right now because no one's buying it. But you all want your milk. Mm -hmm. So our cream silos are getting full. And, and, I, and I find myself here the, the other night, I, I found myself laying in bed at 2 o'clock in the morning, I'm tossing and turning, wondering how I'm going to get rid of cream. <laughs> and, 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 and the alarm goes off a few hours later, and, and, and all, all I end up with when the alarm goes off is really, really tired. Mm -hmm. And guess what? The silos are still full of cream. That's right. true. Come on. But now all, I am is, now all I am is dizzy from spinning. And, 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 and I'm not firing on all cylinders. And when I get to the office, and I should be making good, good decisions and firing on all cylinders, now I'm out of balance. And, and I'm dizzy because I've been spinning all night. And, and, he, and he asks the question, he says, therefore do not worry about, to, tomorrow has enough worry of itself. And, and then he says, and then he says, 
Look at the flowers. Well, wait a minute, Jesus. First you tell me to, to look up. Now you want me to look down. That's right. Observe the birds be because you're going to see them. That you're going to see them doing something that they know to do that you don't know to do. But now I need you to observe the flowers because they're not doing something that you are doing. Look at verse 28. See how the flowers of the field grow? They do not labor or, help me out, or, or, come on, help me out, church. Spin. They do not spin. I came here today to tell somebody that if your heavenly father knows how to take care of the birds of the air, yes, he and he also knows how to take care of the flowers of the field, and he's not worried about how they're going to manage. And they're not even worried about how they're going to manage. I came all this way to tell you, aren't you more valuable than a bird? Aren't you more valuable than a flower? Your heavenly father already knows what you have need of even before you ask. Because you're important to him. So stop spinning. He's not walking the corridors of heaven, wringing his hands, worried about COVID-19. Stop spinning. Stop worrying about something your heavenly father is already working on. And I, I, I'm going to give you three, three simple points today. Uh, the deal with fear. Number one, if you're taking notes, fear breeds more fear. Right. Have you ever noticed that most of the stuff we worry about create other problems that we didn't know to worry about and we started worrying about the stuff that we weren't supposed to worry about? <laughs> In translation, fear and worry get together and have babies. Mm -hmm. And that, that's what that means. I actually read a statistic that, uh, that, that uh, nine, at least 90 3% of the stuff that we worry about never even happens to us. Think about that. That means that less than 7% of the stuff that you and I worry about is ever even likely going to happen to us. Mark Twain said it like this. I've been through some terrible times in my life, a few of which actually happened. Now, now I'm not making light of this. Church, Cross Hill, I'm not, I'm not pretending like we're not in a crisis. Because this is very real. And I, and I don't want you to think I'm making, making light of it. It's real. There, there's a real virus. And, and there are real people being infected by it. And hurt by it. I, I'm saying, you can't allow it to get into your soul. There you go. Like, like it's real, but you can't. You can't allow it to get down on the inside and, and, and get into your soul. Because if you start ruminating in your mind about all the what ifs, the next thing you know, there's going to be a full-blown pandemic not going on out there. It's going to be going on in here. Wow. Number two, fear clouds our judgment. I heard about this guy who was walking along one day and he, he saw this fence and on the on the fence was posted the sign, Beware Vicious Attack Dog. About that time, the owner of the house came out, and on a leash, he had this little foo foo Pomeranian dog. And the man started laughing. He was like, uh, Man, that's your dog? Like, man, that dog can't scare anybody. And the man, the man said, Yeah, said, but that sign can. Huh. <laughs> that, 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 that's, see, a lot of times we start worrying about things that really can't hurt us, but the sign can, right. the, the the news can, yeah. and well, once again, church, I'm not I'm not downplaying this. I'm not making light of what's going on in our world today. Every all of us have been in, 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 in affected by this and impacted by this in, in some way or another. I'm just saying well, we can't let it get down into our soul. Worry is like a fog. It makes, things, it makes things look worse than they really are. I read one time where a dense fog seven blocks long, 100 feet thick, can easily fit into 
a, a, a five gallon bucket of water. In other words, it's big, it's impressive, but the fact is it's just a bunch of vapors that can easily fit into a small bucket. And the next time that, that fear comes in your direction and says, you're not going to make it, your family isn't going to make it, this thing's going to get worse and worse and worse, I want you to look at that fear and say, I know you, you look big, you sound impressive, but I know the truth that there's nothing really to you. You're just a fog. Yeah. And besides that, Psalm 112 tells me that to the upright there arises light in a dark place. That, 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 that's talking about me, otherwise you wouldn't be coming at me so much. Therefore, I will not be shaken. I will not be afraid of evil tidings. My heart is fixed, trusting in the Lord. Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. And lastly today, number, number three, and I'm about to close here. Um, actually, number three is actually the title of my message today. Uh, I'm going to give you the last point. It's going to tell you what you need to do when fear and worry, worry come your way. And this one point, I'm going to spawn off and give you two. I'm going to give you two tangible things that you can do to handle this point. Okay? So here it is. Okay? We're spinning. We're spinning. We're spinning. Here it is. Point number three. Turn your fear into faith. Turn your fear into faith. Right now, look at someone in your family. Look at somebody in your living room and say, and say it's time to turn it around. It's time to turn it around. 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7. For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Question, who is the author of power? God. Yes. Who is the author of love? God. God. So where does a sound mind come from? God. The same place. Yes. Amen. They're the same place. Can, can I really let my hair down a little bit and, and admit to you guys that there, there have been a couple opportunities over the last few weeks for me to, where I, I, didn't, I wasn't functioning in a, in a sound mind. Um, there, there was a few moments over the past couple weeks that, that uh, I kind of got bumped a little bit. And, 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 and some anxiety and some worry started to come up in my heart and I wasn't worried like I was going to get, get a virus. And I wasn't even worried that, that, that the stocks were going to take too long to come back. And it wasn't, You know what I was worried about? I was worried about some of you guys. I, I, I had these thoughts like, God, what if, what, if, what, if they, what if this period of isolation impacts them in a way where what if they don't come back? Can I just be really honest with you? I just, you know, listen, I got, I got, I got the feelings, same feelings as some of you guys do. Come on. And I started thinking, like, God, what if, what if, what if they're just, what if they tune in and then just walk around and just maybe they're logged in on Sunday but they're not really paying attention? What if they don't even log in at all? What if? What if they're not getting any word right now? What if they're not meditating? What if they're not praying right now? And I started having these, these feelings of anxiety, I guess like a, like a shepherd would in, in a field of sheep knowing that there's wolves on the fringe. But can I tell you something? I had to do, guys, I had to do what I'm telling you to do today. When I got in that spin cycle, I had to each time I had to stop and I had to turn my fear into faith. Come on. And, and, I, and I had to proclaim and recognize that there's a better shepherd than I. Mm -hmm. That there is a good shepherd. He's, he's bigger than I am. He's better than I am. And he hasn't lost control. Come on. And he knows what he's doing. Yes, he does. Amen. And he knows how to sustain you. And he's speaking to your hearts. And in those moments, I was just like, come on, Jesus. Come 
on Jesus. Encourage him. Let, 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 him, let, let him sense the tangible presence of, of, of your goodness. Amen. So, Pastor, how do I turn fear into faith? You know, there are two things that you can do right now, and you don't even have to show up to the building called Cross Hill Church to experience it. And you're going to think this is so simple, guys. Number one, you can do it right where you're at, right, right there. You don't have to even come here and show up to do this. Number one, pray. Amen. Start praying. Turn off the television. It's free. Get some worship music playing in the background. Yes. Just start talking to him. Just, just talk to him like, like I'm talking to you right now. Tell, tell him how you're feeling. Tell him, tell, tell him what you're thinking, what's going on. He already knows. Just he, he wants. He wants to fellowship with you. And it doesn't have to be some like elaborate spiritual prayer like Oh thine wonderful creator of heaven and earth, durst thou know that thy servant is need, needing some divine comfort this right now? It doesn't have to be like that. Just just talk to him. Talk to him. I would rather you guys, I would rather you, and it doesn't have to be long and drawn out, I would rather you pray 21 minute prayers throughout the day than, than to pray one 20 minute prayer. Right. I, just, just, just to have this ongoing, just, just throughout the day, this is presence of the Holy Spirit in your heart and life. Pray. Pray. Psalm 34, verse 4, I prayed to the Lord and He answered me. And He freed me from all my fears. Amen. Number two, get into God's Word. He said, I don't know where to start, Pastor. I, didn't, I never went to seminary. How do I, all these feelings of fear and anxiety come up? Where do I, how do I know to even, where do I go? I, here, if you don't know where to go, I, I would suggest Get into the Psalms. If you're, starting, if you're starting to feel fear and anxiety, start reading the Psalms. Just start reading the Word and let that begin to speak to you. In fact, I'm going to give you guys an assignment this week. Uh, I want you to do this for the next six, six days leading up to Easter. Uh, so today through next Saturday, um, and, and you can continue it on if you want. But I, here's the assignment. I want you guys... To, in fact, I want you guys to come up. I want our team to show up here. I want you to just come up and gather behind me a little bit. And bring your phones or your iPads or your, something like that. I want you guys to see something. Uh, and and I, want you, I, want you, I want to give you guys an assignment. Here, here it is. I want you to, every day, I want you to take a few minutes. And I want you to read Psalm 91. But now watch this. Don't just... Don't just read it. Read it out loud. Okay? So read Psalm 91 out loud. Don't just read it out loud, but I want you to personalize it. So everywhere where it says uh, they or, or them or you, turn it around and say me, I, right? Or, or insert your own name. Okay? And so to help you, I already did the work for you. I converted it for you. So if you go on crosshillchurch.com and right there on the front page where there's a link right up there, just it's called Psalm 91. Just click on that big picture of Psalm 91 right on the front page. So you guys go ahead and do that right now. If you guys got that, click on Psalm 91 right there. And let's let's just read this out loud together. Are you guys ready? And when, when it comes to that part where it says, see down there where it says my name? Down there in the box says, just click insert your name. Okay? Are you guys ready? Let's read. I will dwell in the shelter of the Most High. Therefore will I rest in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. Surely He will save me from the foul snare and from the deadly pestilence. He will cover me with His feathers, and under His wings I will find refuge. His faithfulness will be my shield and rampart. I will not fear for the terror by night, 
nor the air that flies by day, nor the pestilence that stalks in the darkness, nor the plague that destroys at midday. A thousand may fall at my side, 10,000 at my right hand, but it will not come near me. I will only observe with my eyes and see the punishment of the wicked. If I say the Lord is my refuge and I make the Most High my dwelling, no harm will overtake me, no disaster will come near my home. For he will command his angels concerning me to guard me in all my ways. They will lift me up in their hands so that I will not strike my foot against a stone. I will tread on the lion and the cobra. I will trample the great lion and the serpent. Because Doug loves me, says the Lord, I will rescue Doug. I will protect Doug, for, for Doug acknowledges my name. Doug will call upon me, and I will answer Doug. I will be with Doug in trouble. I will deliver Doug and honor Doug. With long life will I satisfy Doug and show Doug my salvation. Glory to God. Come on, lift up your hands and worship Him this morning. Amen. Come on, He's with you. He hasn't left you. He loves you. You're, you're more important to Him than a bird or a flower. He's got you. He's already working it out. Come on, keep your soul free of the clutter of worry and fear. In Jesus' name, Father, I pray a hedge of protection over their lives, over their homes, over their finances, over their health, over their children, over their marriages, over their jobs, over their careers. Bless their bosses, bless their employers, bless their companies, bless their pocketbook, bless them when they come in, bless them when they go out, bless the fruit of their bodies, bless their storehouse in Jesus' name. this morning. And listen, you have not made Jesus the Lord of your life. In other words, you you know about God, you've heard a lot about Him, maybe you've even been a seeker of God. But you've never taken the step to receive Jesus as Lord and Savior. I can't imagine being in this season, in this time, and not know Jesus as my personal Savior. You can make that change today, right where you're at. Right where you're at. Simply say this, dear Lord Jesus, dear Lord Jesus I, need you as my Savior. I need you as my Savior. Forgive me of all my sin. Forgive me of all my sin. I'll make you my Lord. Make you my come, Lord. Into my heart. come into my heart. In Jesus' name. In Jesus name. Amen. amen. And amen. Listen, if you prayed that prayer, we believe you got born again. We want to hear from you. Will you please go on our website or call us? Uh, get on there. There's a phone number. Give us a phone call. Call us. Let us know that you've just made Jesus the Lord of your life. We want to send you something. God bless you guys. We appreciate you so very much. Until then, come on. Come on. Stay connected. Come on. Easter's coming this coming Sunday. Let's stay connected. Resurrection Sunday. Love you guys. Appreciate you. Amen. Amen. See you next week.